in a world where the weak are crushed and the strong reign supreme, there are those devoted to power, revenge, and suffering, and those who rise against. Windbreaker is one of those animes that comes out once in a generation, a brawler type show that doesn't escalate into galaxy destroying bijou bombs, but instead focuses on tight choreography and down to earth good old fashioned beatdowns. Today we'll be breaking down why you, yes, you should be watching Windbreaker. So without further ado, I'm Slap Anime, and this is Windbreaker. This shit is pretty good. Yeah. Without a doubt, the best thing about Windbreaker is the action and the hype that builds as the story unfolds. The anime knows what it does great, and it uses its characters, vibes, and plot points in service to it. But what is Windbreaker actually about? About whooping that motherfucking ass! <laughs> We start the story with our main character, Sakura. And unlike Sakura from Naruto, this one isn't completely useless. He's a hooligan with dual tone hair and heterochromia iridum, or however the fuck you say that word. Basically means he has dual colored eyes. Anyways, due to this, he's lived his life as an outcast where people treat him like shit for looking different. And this has pushed him into using his fists to get what he wants. But he isn't a tyrant because he really only uses violence against those that use it themselves. But still, and hilariously so, him living like an outcast has made him have really shitty social skills, like most of you out there. How is Sakura gonna fix this? This life of anxiety, hate, and loneliness. Obviously, he's gonna go to therapy, learn to forgive and forget, and make sure he gets eight hours of sleep every day. Psych, that's the wrong number. He's actually gonna dive in deeper and go whoop some motherfucking ass. And what's the best way to do this? Well, he decides to go to Bofarine High. Bofarine, these nuts. Got him. All right, that's the video, guys. Like, subscribe, and I will see you here next time. All right, all right. Uh, subscribe for reals though and like and shit, but let's get back to it. So Sakura goes to Bofarine High, a war zone for the baddest of the badass. And Sakura plans to take all of them out. Or so he thought. And actually, that's one of the best things about Windbreaker is that things don't go in like the straight path that you would expect in every anime. It's a little hard to predict what's gonna happen. And that's good, because Bofarine High has actually become a place of honor and brotherhood. At least for a couple years now, they've been united. And united for what? Well, it's because the rest of the town is still infested by gangs. So the students of Bofarine have made it their goal to protect the town and its people, becoming the heroes. And dubbed the name Windbreaker. Uh-huh, that's the title of the anime. So yeah, Sakura goes to Bofarine High and is gonna whip some ass. But he is not alone. Because as it turns out, there are actually a lot of people ready to whoop some ass. All with their own unique fighting styles and each with their own reasons for fighting. So yeah, we're gonna talk about characters. Let's start with Nire. He's dead. What? The classical comic relief, a local to the town, but a newcomer to Bofarine. A nerd in his own right, he uses his intelligence to study others for fights. However, Nire isn't the best fighter, but his heart is always in the right place and never hesitates to rush in even when the odds are stacked against him. He is the ambassador to us, the audience, into this wonderful world of Bofarine and a delight to have on this journey as we're introduced to other characters like <gasps> Shuigetsu. Dude is big, strong, and dumb. And nah, nah, that's about it. Next, we have Suo, or as he likes to call himself, Leonardo DiCaprio, yep. Uh. Yes. Dude is fucking hilarious. He's knowledgeable, cool, calm, and collected all the way through. When it comes to combat, the dude becomes a little bit cocky and becomes a bit of a psychopath. I don't want to say too much more about Suo, but dude is fucking badass. Then we have Haragi, one of the four kings, aka one of the four captains that stand below the leader. Hiragi is strong, and the only thing stronger is his sense of honor. He's rumored to have power to challenge the leader, but he's decided to live by his own code, to use power not for violence, 
or to get more power, but instead to protect those in need. But yes, because he chooses to protect doesn't mean he doesn't throw down. And lastly, we have Umamiya, the current leader of Bofarin. The guy who tends to a roof garden, cares about his little sister, and treats the town like his family. After all, it was his plan to unite Bofarin and protect the people, but when trouble rises, he doesn't back down. There are clear flashes of a wild force ready to be unleashed. And when you guys start watching this and you get to that point, it is fucking hype. And hype is one of the reasons this show has struck a chord. Every scene leaves you with intrigue and anticipation about what's gonna happen next. In just three little episodes, the show could get you hyped for a showdown like if you've been waiting a hundred episodes for it. The anime handles its pacing masterfully, giving the audience what they want when they want it. It doesn't take its time getting to where it needs to go, but it doesn't rush it either. It's perfect, like its visuals. It has a blend of clearly directed action mixed in with fluid cuts that build energy as the fight scenes intensify. Nothing is ever messy or unclear. Everything is easy for the eye to follow, which is hard to do, especially when you're animating complicated sequences like this. <laughs> And extremely importantly, the anime is being handled with respect by a team who cares. And that's rare nowadays. And it even shows in their attention to color, setting the correct vibe and tone for every scene. Which tone is also pretty fucking good. It balances its serious, comedic, and heroic moments. And I do want to point out, specifically, it never uses comedy as a cop-out to good storytelling or in detriment to its own self. <coughs> like Marvel movies. Trust me, this show is good. And the only reason it isn't more popular is because it's about kids doing what they think is right and not some isekai kaiju waifu bait type of thing. Which by the way, I love all that shit. I'm not hating on it. I'm just saying it's the reason that Windbreaker stands out. And finally, I want to talk about the scene that hooked me. At the border of Bofarina and Shishi Torin, a young middle school kid runs for his life. Three men in orange jackets chase. But in the tunnel, the kid is still in Shishitorin territory. Sakura and Shrigetsu leap into action, knocking out one of the Shishitorin members out cold. Then walks in the second in command of Shishitorin. He first turns to his fallen brethren, or former brethren. He delivers a beating before stripping him of his jackets, for there is no place for weakness in Shishitorin, and Bofurin is no longer safe. For Shishi Torin are devotees of power, and power unchecked always arrives at your doorstep. Bofarin versus motherfucking Shishi Torin. Yay! And guess what? Something's happened. There are casualties on both sides, and at some point, both leaders come face to face with their faithful behind, ready to throw fucking down. So, yeah, shit gets real. But what now? Well, I'm not gonna spoil anything else. You guys need to go watch it and then come back and comment down below. Let me know why you do like Windbreaker or if for some reason why you don't. I am curious to have that conversation too. But with that, I am Slap Anime and slap that motherfucking subscribe button. Por favor, but I'd appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. All right, peace. All right, I'm outie, peace.